This detective series has just released its first episode, introducing us to the world of Detective Sam Spade, who lost his ex-partner, Bridget O'Shaughnessy, in Istanbul. Spade had been given the responsibility to take O'Shaughnessy's young daughter, Teresa, and hand her over to Philippe, who was Teresa's biological father. However, things didn't go as planned, and eventually, Spade fell in love with the quaint French village of Bozelles, until one day he had to look into a horrific murder scene that was connected with Philippe and Spade's past. After an accident in Istanbul claimed Bridget O'Shaughnessy's life, Sam Spade came to a French village named Bozelles to hand Teresa over to her family, which consisted of Teresa's father, Philippe, and grandmother, Audrey. But Audrey wasn't very happy to see Teresa and expressed her joy for O'Shaughnessy's death. However, she also told Spade that her son, Philippe, who wasn't in the village anymore, had made a great mistake by marrying Bridget, and now neither of them wanted to take responsibility for the child. Spade didn't irritate them any further and decided to take care of Teresa until she became an adult. He enrolled Teresa in a convent where she was under the supervision of the mother superior. Spade used to visit regularly, but with time the frequency of his visits dropped off. Spade fell in love with a local woman from the village. Her name was Gabrielle, but even though they fell in love and got hastily married, Gabrielle couldn't give Spade a long-term blissful married life. After Gabrielle passed away, a widower Samuel Spade spent eight years in Bozelles, as he not only fell in love with Gabrielle, but was also in love with this village. Spade started an affair with local pub owner Jean-Pierre de Verroa's wife, Margarita. However, Jean-Pierre knew about this affair, and he wasn't much bothered about it. Spade was repeatedly warned by the chief of police, Patris, to stay away from any commotion, as he didn't want Spade to stir up any trouble in this village. Spade had quite a history of being a dangerous man who wasn't very social or easygoing. Therefore, Patris was quite intimidated by Spade from the start. In the meantime, Spade was diagnosed with emphysema, which would slowly kill him if he didn't quit smoking right away. At this point in his life, Spade seemed to have a life least affected by worries, but emphysema caused him to stress over his own life. He quit smoking only outside of the house as whenever people used to offer him cigarettes, he refused to smoke, but during the sleepless nights at home, he was seen taking a puff or two. In the interim, a rumor of Philippe coming back was spread in the village. One night, Spade even received a call from Philippe, whose vengeful voice caused him to worry. Philippe had always been vengeful towards Spade, not only because Spade was in love with Bridget. When Gabrielle was alive and being blackmailed by Philippe, Spade intervened and managed to get Philippe sent off to the war. Philippe never wanted to participate in the war, but he had to because of Spade. Therefore, if he were returning to the village, it would be to take revenge on Sam Spade. Meanwhile, Teresa seemed to be a little suspicious. She knew that Spade loved her like his own daughter, but deep in her heart, she somehow wanted to reconnect with Philippe. Philippe, however, never showed genuine care and affection for his daughter, and as we've already seen, Philippe's mother Audrey was also a heartless woman who didn't care about Teresa's existence. But Bridget seemed to have amassed wealth for her daughter during the time when she used to work in Istanbul. Given that Spade had always loved Bridget, he was committed to his role as a father figure in Teresa's life and wanted to give her the guidance and support that Teresa deserved. Teresa was grateful to Spade and even all the nuns in the convent were fond of Spade, but she also craved Philippe's attention in her life. When Philippe made the call, Spade heard a gunshot from the other side and he quickly thought of Teresa's safety. As he contacted Patris, the policeman once again warned Spade not to look for Philippe or try to get into trouble with him. Sam Spade would never listen to Patris, as he was gravely concerned for Teresa. However, that night, Teresa came back home to Sam Spade, who saw that her clothes were stained by blood. Teresa told him that while she was in the convent, Philippe had visited her, but he was wounded by a gunshot. Sam realized that Philippe had also put Teresa's life in danger, so he decided to look into the matter. Teresa talked about a hooded man, who was seen earlier in this episode, interrupting a conversation between Patris and Spade. However, Teresa's statement seemed to be very sketchy, as it seemed likely she was hiding something that she had witnessed in the convent. Without wasting time, Spade hurried to the convent and found that some kids were locked up inside a room. He talked to the kids, who mentioned that Teresa might have the keys to the room. So if Teresa had the keys, why didn't she let the children go? To answer that, we may say that Teresa was trying to save her father's neck by withholding something crucial she had witnessed at the scene. However, Spade didn't question Teresa yet and headed to the prayer hall, where he was startled to find that all six nuns, including Mother Superior, had been shot in the head. They must have been killed by either Philippe or that hooded man. Or possibly that hooded man was Philippe, but we have yet to know that. 
As the mystery thickens in the upcoming episodes, more clues will surface. We'll soon come to know if Philippe is really back in town and killing people, or if there was something more sinister to the story. After the incident, Teresa went away from the house as she was clearly traumatized. She knew something about the murders of the nuns, but she was not telling anybody. Spade found her and asked her to come back home. One thing that we realized in this episode was that Teresa was not threatened by her father. Probably she didn't want to live with him, but she was not averse to meeting him, something that we couldn't speculate in the previous episode. Philippe came wounded to meet Teresa, and Spade knew that there was something more to the entire issue. Spade and Teresa were going in his Rolls Royce when suddenly someone shot at them from behind. The guy missed his shot, and Spade started to chase him. Patris Michaud came to investigate the matter, but he too wasn't able to find anything noteworthy. Spade knew for sure that he was not the target of the shooter. He knew that the shooter wanted to kill Teresa, and that was why he asked her what she was hiding from him. But Teresa wasn't ready to speak, and she was just trying to avoid the topic altogether. Meanwhile, George, Spade's neighbor, called his mother over to his place. Both of them wanted to see a painting that Spade had in his house, and he called them inside to take a look at it. Spade got to know that George's mother knew Philip from before, and she had a very different perception of him. Spade was surprised, and he double-checked with her to see if they were both talking about the same guy. George's mother told Spade that Philip had paid a generous amount for a painting that he wanted. Spade was surprised, as he didn't think that Philip was someone who was interested in art. Jean-Pierre, as we saw in the first episode, was jealous of Spade, and he knew that something was happening between him and his wife, Margarita de Veru. Margarita told him time and again that she didn't have anything to do with Spade, but her husband didn't believe her even for a moment. Jean didn't have any money, and he had to toil hard to make a living. He wanted to repair things with Margarita, but he knew that it was not such an easy task. We got to know in the second episode of Monsieur Spade that Jean-Pierre wanted to inherit a piece of land that earlier belonged to Gabrielle. Margarita told him that it was the law that after the death of one's wife, the husband inherited her entire property, and so it was not Spade's fault that he had everything under his name. But Jean-Pierre's point was different. He said that he worked in that vineyard, and he should have gotten the title to that land. I personally understand why Jean-Pierre was in such an insecure space. Spade's personality did make others around him feel small. Margarita was quite evidently attracted to him, and probably nothing would have ever happened between them, but Jean-Pierre still saw how she looked at him. Jean-Pierre wanted to repair things with Margarita. He wanted to tell her how much he loved her, and he was not ready to accept the fact that they wouldn't be able to bring back that last spark. At the end, Teresa finally revealed what had happened on that fateful night. She said that her father brought a kid with him named Zaid. Probably, Philippe was having an affair with a nun named Angelique. Philippe had come to meet her only, but after he got shot, his plan changed. He wanted to protect the kid, so he asked Teresa to hide him somewhere. Teresa went upstairs and did what she was asked to. That's when she heard the first gunshot. She came running down, and she saw that all the children were scared, as somebody had broken into the chapel and had a weapon with him. Teresa hid the other kids and then went to the chapel to see what was happening. There was a monk who had come looking for that same kid. He asked the nuns one by one, and when they didn't tell, he killed them by shooting them point blank. The monk saw Teresa too, and he came for her. Teresa had a sharp knife with her, and she stabbed the monk with it and escaped from there. She went upstairs, but she was not able to find the kid there. Teresa somehow managed to make a near escape, and probably later, the shooter was sent by the same monk to kill her. During the ending, we saw that the kid's aide was still alive. He was at Samia's house, and he was evidently scared. When the monk was just about to kill Angelique, she said something that complicated the matter even more. She said, Mahdi awaits you. A Mahdi is like a messiah or a leader who assumes the role of one. Spade knew that there was some detail he was missing out on, and there were things happening that he had no clue about. We don't know as of now why that kid was so important and why the monk was after his life. In the subsequent episodes, we would get to know what kind of trouble Philip was in and what that monk wanted to achieve.